A massive proportion of horror films are centred around a masked or otherwise concealed assailant picking off a slew of hapless victims in nauseating fashion, leaving audiences eager to see their identity revealed in a shocking twist at film's end. But not all killers are quite as calculated, nor do they necessarily know exactly what they're doing, as is absolutely the case with these ten horror movie murderers, each of whom had no idea they themselves were the killers. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with ten more horror movie characters who didn't know they were the killer. Number 10. Sam Westcott in You Might Be the Killer Let's kick things off with a rather tongue-in-cheek example with the aptly titled 2018 horror comedy You Might Be the Killer. The story kicks off with camp counsellor Sam calling up his horror enthusiast friend Chuck for help when a masked murderer begins slaughtering the camp's other counsellors. Sam curiously suffers blackouts throughout the story, and given that he's also covered in blood holding the killer's knife and has possession of their very distinct mask, he and Chuck are forced to come to the conclusion that he must in fact be the killer himself. And indeed, Sam is the film's primary killer, albeit through no real fault of his own given that he gets possessed by a cursed mask which is first placed on his head as a seemingly harmless gag by a fellow counsellor. Ultimately, Sam leaves a pile of bodies in his wake regardless, before eventually being killed at the end by another counsellor, Jamie, who also dons the mask. Number 9. David Kessler in An American Werewolf in London An American Werewolf in London sees two American backpackers, David and Jack, attacked by a werewolf while out on the Yorkshire moors. Jack is killed, but David survives, albeit while having unknowingly become a werewolf himself. Though an increasingly grisly vision of Jack urges David to kill himself before the next full moon to avoid turning into a werewolf, David refuses to believe him. This comes to a brutal head when, on the next full moon, David indeed turns into a werewolf and kills six people across London, before waking up naked in London Zoo with no memory of what happened the night before. It admittedly doesn't take David long to piece things together, but as he wrestles with what to do about his situation, he again transforms and commits another savage rampage. Though a fleck of David's humanity is briefly perceptible during the climax when he fleetingly recognises his lover Alex, he's ultimately shot and killed by the police before reverting back to naked human form. Albeit dead. Number 8. Anton Tobias in Idle Hands the utterly ridiculous yet ludicrously entertaining cult classic Idle Hands centres around stoner teenager Anton Tobias, who after his parents go missing for a week stumbles upon their brutalised corpses inside his house. Anton's pothead pals immediately assume him to be the killer, which Anton naturally denies, yet in the ensuing moments he also ends up killing them both, shoving a glass bottle into one of their skulls and decapitating the other with a circular saw. The rub? Anton technically is the killer despite his denials, but only because his demonically possessed right hand is acting of its own accord and killing whoever the hell it wants. Anton spends the rest of the film battling his disobedient appendage, eventually resorting to chopping it off with a cleaver which really only makes matters worse. Ultimately, the hand is defeated for good when it's stabbed with a ritual knife, but not before it's racked up quite the impressive body count indeed. Number 7. Gordon Fleming in Session 9 Session 9 follows protagonist Gordon Fleming, the owner of an asbestos cleanup company who heads to an abandoned psychiatric hospital with his crew for his latest job. Things get increasingly creepy and unsettling throughout the film, and though the audience is steered in several directions once the bodies start piling up, it's ultimately revealed that the killer was unknowingly Gordon himself, who killed his colleagues while in a dissociated state. It's additionally revealed that Gordon killed his own wife and daughter following a household accident prior to the job. However, it's left ambiguous as to whether Gordon simply snapped of his own accord or was actually possessed by Simon, a malevolent alternate personality of one of the hospital's previous patients who preys on the weak and the wounded. Number 6. Harry Angel in Angel Heart in Angel Heart, private investigator Harry Angel is hired by a man named Louis Cipher to track down a crooner called Johnny Favourite, who in the midst of a mental health episode broke a contract he made with Cipher. As Angel investigates Favourite's disappearance, people related to the case soon enough start dying, all while an increasingly troubling picture of Favourite, of an occultist who allegedly sold his soul for fame, materialises. But eventually Angel realises that he is Favourite, and worse still, Cypher is the devil, as in Louis Cypher equals Lucifer, get it? 
Angel then learns that he himself committed the various murders throughout the story, albeit under Cypher's diabolic influence in order to condemn him to hell and allow Cypher to claim his soul. Angel repressed any knowledge of the killings in order to avoid facing the truth. The story then ends with Cypher indeed claiming Angel's slash favourite soul and sending him straight to hell on a literal elevator. Number 5. Lieutenant Peyton in Pandorum 2009 sci-fi horror Pandorum is often considered the spiritual successor to Paul W.S. Anderson's cult fave Event Horizon, where two crew members of a spaceship, Corporal Bauer and Lieutenant Peyton, awake unexpectedly early from hypersleep. Then they must discern whether the increasingly horrifying sights they're witness to are real or a mere result of space psychosis, aka Pandorum. The pair slowly but surely discover other crew members such as Corporal Gallo, who previously went insane, killed members of his crew and then went back into hypersleep. Later in the film, Peyton attempts to sedate Gallo, leading to a fight where it's revealed that Gallo is a mere hallucination because Peyton actually is Gallo. A long time ago, Gallo killed the real Peyton after developing Pandorum and used Peyton's pod to re-enter hypersleep. And so, when Gallo re-emerged from hypersleep with amnesia much later, he assumed himself to be Peyton with no knowledge of his prior murderous acts. Soon thereafter, though, Peyton slash Gallo reverts to his killer prior self, but is ultimately drowned by the remaining heroes for his trouble. Number 4. Everyone in Identity Identity boasts one of the all-time most iconic plot twists in all of cinema. James Mangold's tense horror thriller centres around ten strangers who find themselves stranded at a motel during a torrential rainstorm and are picked off one by one by a mysterious killer. It's eventually revealed, of course, that all of the central characters are alternate personalities of a serial killer awaiting execution, Malcolm Rivers. As such, none of the characters are real, but are nevertheless being systematically slain by one of Rivers' personalities, who wishes to become the supreme personality within Rivers' mind. At film's end, the killer is revealed to be the least likely of all the personalities, nine-year-old Timmy, who both faked his own death and orchestrated the deaths of all of the other personalities in order to become the single remaining one. After Timmy is left the last persona standing, the film then ends with Rivers appearing to escape his incarceration. Number 3. Enid Baines in Censor In this deliciously twisted psychological horror Censor, Enid Baines works as a film certifier for the BBFC, and is as such exposed to a tremendous amount of ultra-violent, arguably objectionable cinema. Enid's own traumatic past involves the disappearance of her sister Nina when they were children, and though Nina has been declared legally dead, Enid still believes her to be alive. After screening one of a veteran horror filmmaker's old films, she notices scenes which parallel her own memories of her sister's disappearance, and that the film's lead actress, Alice Lee, even resembles Nina. Enid's quest for answers causes her to accidentally kill a lecherous film producer before she heads to the set of a sequel to the aforementioned film, where she plans to rescue her sister from her apparent captors. This leads to Enid murdering an actor she believed was going to hurt Alice before a terrified Alice flees from Enid. The grim finale sees Enid dissociate entirely from reality, rejecting the reality of her murderous delusion and instead imagining a sunny outcome where she's returned home with Nina. In reality, she's actually kidnapped Alice and depending on your interpretation, she might have also killed Nina as a child. Number 2. Peter Neal in Tenebrae Dario Argento's classic 1982 giallo Tenebrae sees a writer of horror novels, Peter Neal, stalked by a serial killer while on a book tour in Rome, the killer claiming to be inspired by Neal's work. Though the single killer is initially believed to be obsessive TV interviewer Cristiano Berti, Berti is himself hacked to death with an axe halfway through the film. And while Bertie did indeed commit the first spate of murders, it's revealed at the end that he was killed by Neil, who, after hearing about Bertie's spree, inspired by his books, uncovered a repressed memory from his own youth where he killed a girl who sexually humiliated him. This memory evidently lay dormant for years until Bertie's murders brought it back to the surface, driving him mad and causing him to venture on his own killing spree, leading to his own demise in the climax. Number 1. Madison Lake Mitchell in Malignant Now, James Wan's Malignant does come with the slight caveat that the protagonist, while absolutely the physical killer throughout the movie, ultimately had their body hijacked by a vestigial part of them. Throughout Wan's bonkers giallo homage, the central serial killer, Gabriel, is believed to be protagonist Madison's imaginary childhood friend inexplicably come to murderous life. 
But in the crazy third act, we learn that Gabriel was in fact Madison's parasitic twin brother, who was attached to Madison's back, and though Gabriel's body was surgically removed and the remnants sealed inside Madison's skull, he wasn't truly gone. When Madison's abusive husband pushed her head against a wall, the resulting fracture woke Gabriel, allowing him to take control of Madison's body at will to carry out the killings. This also explains why Gabriel appears to move backwards and has upside down handprints. Given that Gabriel faces backwards out of Madison's head, it only makes sense that he would pilot her backwards. Again, Madison isn't mentally committing the killings herself, but it is her body being possessed to commit heinous murders without her knowledge. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.